It's time to hear from Mayor Winstead. Now there are so many things that I could say about Mayor Jean Winstead, but simply all I'm going to do is ask him to join us here on stage and definitely talk about how we are one Bloomington. I'm glad she was brief in talking about me because there are certain things that shouldn't be said. And welcome. It's great to have you all here today at the 2018 State of the City event. And you need to know that this is my 19th presentation of a State of the City event for the City of Bloomington. You know, there are so many people in this room that have been involved in really creating, making this, and moving this city forward over time. And it's great to be here today to really work on and celebrate us and who we are. You know, we're the residents, we're the business owners, we're the employees, we're those who commute to this community to work. And we are all Bloomington. We're here to tell the story of our accomplishments this past year, to look at where we are as a community, and to provide a glimpse of what's ahead. Let's begin with who we are. This year's theme, We Are Bloomington, was inspired by several things. First, it aligns with the One Bloomington, our three-year strategic plan, something we'll talk more about. Inspiration also was from the artistry mural, which hangs on the Bloomington Civic Plaza wall. It was a result of an activity several years ago by a local artist, Sandra Mazzi. During the Heritage Day community event, which is a great community event, and I know that you've all partaken in the past, uh, she invited people to wander by to leave their mark in ink and pens. The outcome was a wonderful representation of the variety of ages, backgrounds, and interests of the people that was captured in that moment. We were also inspired by stories from people in this community. Bloomington is filled with exceptional people doing remarkable things. They are your neighbors, they're our students, and our business owners. Everyone has a unique story to tell. And here are a couple of those inspirational, unique stories. I'm Luis Romero. Um, well, I guess my story begins with my parents. My mom's um, an immigrant from Mexico, and my dad's an immigrant from Guatemala. I was adopted when I was a baby from South Korea. I'm a T6 paraplegic. And from the waist down, I don't have any feeling. I was born in Nairobi, Kenya. My grandfather moved here before I was born, and so my mom applied for refugee status. When I was uh, yeah, a little younger, I, I worked with oil painting, and then uh, I suddenly lost my sight. I was the maintenance man at Pox Christie Church in Eden Prairie, and uh, a woman brought in a crib. So that afternoon, I'm sitting there, and I say to myself, why can't we do this? Why can't we take things people no longer need and give it to somebody who needs it? This is no rocket scientist idea. Everybody's got stuff. Give it to somebody who needs it. 30 years later, we have this beautiful warehouse in Bloomington. From like first to like fifth grade, it was really hard to learn English. So like I had to take ESL classes like that. My dad, has done community college, but he he hasn't done like a four-year university or anything. But my mom only has some high school experience. I want to be an engineer. Take every opportunity, like no matter how rigorous, how scary, or how like time-consuming it is, like just take advantage of those opportunities. When I was younger, we went to Station One for one of the open houses, and I thought it was so cool to like climb on the trucks and play with the hose and just everything involved in it. And I told my dad. One day I wanted to be a firefighter. So when I moved back after college, I decided to put an application in. I love it. Um, it's really cool to be a part of Bloomington community. Before I lost my sight, I never painted life. And so then suddenly I got patience, I guess. And I started, I'm going to try animals. And, uh, and so I started painting animals. And, uh, and uh, a couple of them weren't so good. But uh, you know, I got there where I could paint. I, I can now paint. Anything. Yeah, if we talk about Americans with Disability Act or ADA, pre-ADA was relatively difficult to get around. Uh, there weren't curb cuts, obviously. Uh, you had to learn how to, if you were using a wheelchair, 
jump the curb by flipping the front end up and either bouncing the back end over it or somebody would push you up over there. Or you had to go down a uh, driveway somewhere and then wheel in the street. Housing, apartments, uh, you couldn't really get to different apartments or choice. Then in the, the 70s, we started to see some changes. There's been great gains. Uh, Bloomington's continued to lead in a lot of ways. Diplomacy and stuff, I'm really interested in working for the um, State Department is my end goal. A very, very high, high, high end goal, but that's um, kind of what I want to end up doing and help like the entire country as a whole if I'm able to do that. Make a big change. When good people get together and do good things, then good things happen. <laughs>Some of the people from our community, these inspirational people, are in this video and they are here with us today. Please stand and let us recognize you. Najma Dave is here, Luis Romero, Fran Heinzman, and Ken Dobratz are here with us today. You know, just look around. These are your neighbors who represent all of us. One Bloomington is the City Council's strategic plan that was written with the goal of strengthening this city. We live in different neighborhoods, but we are not defined by boundaries. We have a large range and variety of businesses that contribute to our community's vitality. We embrace the city's growing diversity, whether it be age, race, or religion. We have differing opinions, but work together to reach common goals. We are united with one common vision of making this a better community. The City Council's six priorities for this plan include our community amenities, preserving what we have while planning for future needs, community image, it's important that our story is told, environmental sustainability, we need to be the best stewards of our environment, focus renewal, we're an aging community that must continue to maintain and enhance itself, high quality service delivery, Top-notch services in all areas are what is expected and what we should be delivering. Inclusion and equity. One Bloomington is consideration of all. I'll be touching on these six priorities that the City Council identified and the progress that we have made. One reason we're here is to celebrate our accomplishments. And let's take a look at what this city, what this community has achieved over the past year. In every neighborhood. My favorite part is the side. There are many stories to be found. Big is actually my home away from home. From the South Loop. Art is really pretty and interesting, and I just think it should be everywhere. To Bush Lake Beach. It's a once in a lifetime chance. It's an experience you won't forget. Together, we are Bloomington, a city with a story to tell. Welcome to our great city and the bold north for Super Bowl 52. In the last year, our city was in the international spotlight. Super Bowl 52 met sold out hotels around Bloomington, the media broadcasting from Mall of America, and illuminate South Loop at Bloomington Central Park. Really what we wanted to do was activate this park space and just kind of generate ideas and excitement for the South Loop and what we could do in the future for creative placemaking. The big game was also the result of a lot of hard work. Bloomington police prepared for more than a year and a half to help keep the mall safe and fun for visitors. We'll make sure that everybody as always who comes to Bloomington leaves with a smile on their face and with the, the hope return. But media attention on Bloomington didn't start with the Super Bowl. The city made it to the final round in the process to host Expo 2023, or the World's Fair, with a potential site in South Loop. And over at the Bloomington Ice Garden, the arena got second place in a national contest winning $75,000 for rink improvements. I've been playing hockey for six years and there's no place I'd rather play. From the national stage 
to everyday improvements. Many projects are in the works to make Bloomington even better. The Mall of America Transit Station finally got the funding it needed on the bonding bill. The Mall Transit Station is the busiest transit station in the state. More good news for commuters. Drivers looking to get westbound on 494 from East Bush Lake Road will soon be able to get on a new ramp that is under construction and is expected to open this November. And a new community center may be getting closer to becoming a reality. Talks with the YMCA were formalized and a stakeholder working group has been looking at potential sites. Speaking of community, people got out and enjoyed their city and each other during many events. From safe summer nights with the Bloomington Police Department to a creative placemaking happy hour in South Loop. There, people celebrated all the art popping up in the area. They all start to create an artistic conversation on the Bloomington South Loop campus. It's not just uh, so much solo pieces of artworks, you're running into them more now, so it becomes a part of the overall experience. And many of these projects wouldn't be possible without partnerships. Last year, the city teamed up with the school district for a new playground at Valley View. It has more um, stuff to do, has a lot of levels. The old playground was a little boring and the new playground is funner. Several agencies also band together to fight Buck Thorn at Oak Grove Elementary School with goats. I think they're pretty cool. I think they're helping the school environment and eating all the Buck Thorn so more plants can grow. Making spaces better. That is what is at the core of all city services. It's been a really kind of welcoming place to come into. And giving each person story. We're not just a suburban city and stuff. We got, we got good places. A special place to be told. Goats and kids and trucks, it's all happening in Bloomington. But also earlier in 2018, we welcomed three new council members. At-large council member, Nathan Coulter. District two council member, Sean Nelson. District four council member, Patrick Martin. They joined council member at-large, Tim Bussey, and district one council member, Dwayne Lohman. And then recently re-elected district three council member, Jack Beloga. This is a city council committed to ensuring this community continues to thrive. Bloomington works and we are a top employer in the metro area. The latest unemployment statistics show good news with Bloomington's unemployment rate at 2.8%. And this is compared to the national unemployment rate of 3.9%. In fact, Bloomington is a job magnet. Of people who work in Bloomington, 84% commute in from elsewhere and other cities. A recent MinPost article looked at which Minnesota cities are bedroom communities and which are job centers. In terms of net commuters coming in, Bloomington ranks second only to Minneapolis in Minnesota with a net inflow of even more commuters than the much larger city of St. Paul. Having so many jobs in Bloomington is good for its residents and good for its tax base. And of course, what helps bring these people here to work? Major transportation systems, like Trunk Highway 169, the Bloomington Ferry Bridge, Trunk Highway 77, the light rail, and of course, Interstates 494 and 35W. You heard it earlier in the remarks by Kim, and we have been preaching and yeah, saying and begging for years how this interchange of 494 and 35W is an unsafe intersection, and we've been trying to secure funding to improve it. It has become a vital interchange, and for 17 years, we have been fighting for its improvement, but this has been slow going. I-35W and 494. For a decade, I have been speaking to this one, and it's been a long journey working to improve this interchange. Constructed more than 50 years ago, the interchange is showing its age, with congestion and safety being its major drawbacks. Can you say broken record? It's uh, been something that we have been working for, and obviously you've heard a lot about it before. 
This roadway sees about a half a million vehicles each day, and the area around it has developed substantially. About a fifth of all metro jobs are along the 494 corridor. The total price to redo the interchange is now in the range of $400 million. But we can get something done in the first phase of that could be about an $85 million project. We have submitted the project through the state's Corridors of Commerce program and should hear by this April if this project finally gets chosen for funding. We're still fighting, we're still working on it. Businesses who help employ those commuters are thriving in Bloomington. You saw new development in the video earlier. Others along or very near to 494 and 35W include a software company, A. OATI, a software company that caters to the utility industry, they constructed a 110,000 square foot office building and data center. Their building is unique as it has both solar and wind power on the roof and houses other alternative energy sources. The Great Wolf Water Park Hotel had major renovations to every room as well as the water park. The preserve at Normandale Lake. It is a 175 unit apartment building and is the third new large residential project that opened in the Normandale Lake District. And in South Loop at 26th Avenue across from the Mall of America, a three tenant retail building with Hazelwood Restaurant, The Grind, and Jimmy John's has opened. And there's also a Marriott AC Hotel that opened a 148 room, five story hotel with a 326 space parking ramp. And by the way, Good to get recognition on occasion. The Grind and Hazelwood were two of the top 10 new Twin Cities establishment recently named Restaurants You Should Know About by the Star and Tribune. And it's just really good to see Bloomington establishments getting recognition. Speaking of restaurants, some recently cool news from Dairy Queen International. DQ is moving its corporate headquarters from Edina to Bloomington. The company will relocate to the 8,000 tower in Normandale Office Park, occupying more than 50,000 square feet. We are just dilly delighted to have DQ in Bloomington. <laughs> Bloomington South Loop District continues to be the city's largest area for growth potential. In fact, between now and 2040, we're forecasting that South Loop will host two thirds of Bloomington's employment growth and one third of our population growth. New ideas and new development are what keeps us going strong. The city is analyzing whether to finance a large indoor water park in South Loop next to the Mall of America. If it moves forward, it would bring another world-class amenity to Bloomington. The city's general fund benefits already from hotel room taxes and admission taxes, and a park would drive demand for many more hotel room nights. We are being careful so as to make sure Bloomington has minimal risk if this project moves forward. The Bloomington hospitality industry is second to none, and I'm excited that in the near future, four new hotels will add to the city's more than 9,100 hotel rooms. Cambria Suites will build a 164-room hotel and restaurant in the South Loop on 28th Avenue. Also in South Loop, True Home 2 Suites will erect a 182-room hotel on East Old Shakopee Road. Holiday Inn Express is planning a 171-room hotel along the 494 Strip in the vicinity of the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. And a 7,000-square-foot restaurant and 214 room hotel will be coming to the 494 in France area as Drury Inn goes up on Minnesota Drive. As stated in the video earlier, we had tremendous exposure on the national and international stage this past year with the Super Bowl, the X Games, and Expo 2023, the World's Fair bid. What people from around the world discovered about Bloomington is what we already knew about this community. People became aware of our great location, our natural beauty, lots of parks and open space, international attractions, all the corporate headquarters that are here, and really quality living. We are a vibrant and diverse community, and there is much to love about our city. On the local stage, we conducted citizen surveys for the sixth year in a row and had some of the best results we have ever seen. 
Bloomington continues to have strong livability scores. Nearly nine out of 10 respondents said they would recommend Bloomington as a place to live. 92% rated the overall quality of life here as excellent or good, and this is up from 85% in 2016. And 95% favorably rated Bloomington as a place to live, and this is up from 90% in 2016. One reason people love it here, it's because it's a great place to raise and educate their children. Some of the, uh, this past year's milestones for the Bloomington Public Schools include an increase in the third grade students' reading proficiency with reading growth increasing to the highest levels in three years. The six-year graduation rate increased to over 91% and students are on course for college based on their ACT exam scores. Normandale Hills Elementary School was one of eight Minnesota elementary schools to earn the Minnesota School of Excellence designation. Seven other Bloomington schools hold this designation. The city continues to work closely with Bloomington schools and it supports their efforts. We know the quality and reputation of the schools is important to the future of our community. In the surveys, 90% of respondents rated their neighborhood excellent or good as a place to live. And we are continuing to work to ensure that all neighborhoods continue to thrive. For example, the Neighborhood Focus Area Initiative provides extra resources in specific areas of the city. The initiative provides resources for housing rehabilitation, sidewalks, park improvements, and loans for curb appeal enhancement for homeowners in selected neighborhoods. Continuing on the great progress we made in 2016 and 2017, the neighborhood selected in 2018 is south of American Boulevard, west of Portland Avenue, north of 91st Street, and east of Pleasant Avenue. Creative placemaking works to build vibrant, distinctive, and sustainable neighborhoods through the arts. Uh, coinciding with the Neighborhood Initiatives Project and the park improvements is the Wrights Lake Park Mural, a creative placemaking initiative from the city and artistry that will be created on the 2,800 square foot retaining wall adjacent to Highway 77. Artistry and Good Space Murals led three community designing uh, visioning sessions, one of which included students from grades six through eight to envision what they wanted to, re to have represented on the mural. The mural will help create a strong identity for the neighborhood highlight the park and regional bike trail, beautify the area, and discourage future graffiti. The community-led process is intended to foster community pride and deepen community involvement and engagement. And just this week, we received the concept idea of what the mural will look like. Six additional painting parties will be held throughout Bloomington in May and June. A celebration event and painting party will be held on June 23rd. And finally, the installation will take place in August of this year. Last year was a busy year for parks as we continue to improve these wonderful amenities all over our city. Playground improvements were made at 13 parks and at Valley View Elementary School. The majority of the improvements replaced playground equipment that was originally installed almost 30 years ago. This year, the running park playground replacement will be completed and each of the 14 improvement sites will receive picnic tables, benches, and bike racks. Residents have long expressed a desire for a more modern and comprehensive community center. Last year, the city entered into an agreement with the YMCA of the Greater Twin Cities to explore the possibility of being a partner in building a community center in Bloomington. A stakeholder working group made up of representatives from the city and the YMCA has been working to move this project forward. The school district was recently invited to be a partner in the process and participate in the working group. The biggest task of the group, on the group's plate right now is identifying a site for the new community center. Once a site has been identified, the next step is to undertake market research to identify key features and programming desired in the facility. City of Bloomington staff is working closely with the Sustainability Commission to help guide sustainable policies and practices to protect our environment and improve the quality of life for this community. Starting April 21st, residents will now be able to bring organic waste, food scraps, and non-recyclable paper 
to two drop-off locations for collection and composting. Organics recycling reduces the amount of trash produced and saves money if you reduce the size of your trash cart. This is a free program to all residents. We also are in the third year of the city-operated garbage and recycling program. It was a challenging undertaking, but it is working for the benefit of the entire community. Of course, we need strong financial management as one of our goals. The city adheres to a set of financial principles. And first, it's not like you've never heard this before, but our triple, triple A, the highest bond ratings from all three bond rating agencies reaffirms our excellence in financial position. And you're gonna hear it again. Out of almost 19,500 cities in the United States, there are only 32 that have three triple A's and Bloomington continues to be the only city in Minnesota to achieve this highest rating. <laughs> Second, at a cost of $78.26 uh, per month for city service for the median value home, Bloomington compares favorably with other cities in Hennepin County. In fact, we are at the low end of cost to deliver services. So we are ensuring a great value for our residents. Third, we want to ensure you receive excellent value for the $78 per month. For example, $25.23 for police services, $17.57 for quality of life services such as parks, and recreation services, and public health, $14.84 to have your streets plowed and maintained, and $6.16 for fire and emergency response. Around 60% of the total monthly bill goes toward the public safety core services of police, fire, and public works, which, according to the Bloomington City Survey, continues to be the highest priority of services for both residents and businesses. Firefighters alone responded to more than 1,800 911 calls for service in 2017, including this call, which happened just yesterday. Firefighter Robbie Smith rescued a dog that had fallen through the thin ice in Hague Park on 83rd, 83rd and Penn. The dog, cold and wet, but happy to be out, was rescued and returned to the owner. We are Bloomington. 1,900 calls for service from our fire department, public safety. It's, it's an amazing number. But we are Bloomington a strong, united community doing great things. And really, a challenge here for you is how will you make your mark? It's important that the impact we make today will positively affect the generations to come. And you can see, like these kids, your kids, and our grandkids, <laughs> this is how I worked the grandkids into the presentation again this year. You're all familiar with that. It's there, but it is important that we make a mark that is something that can affect positively future generations. So at this time, and I'm, uh, I'm here to introduce Jamie Verbrugge, our Bloomington City Manager, and he will provide you with additional insight about the city services and initiatives and the people who provide these services. City Manager, Jamie Verbrugge. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Kim and Deb, thank you very much for hosting us once again. We uh, always appreciate the opportunity to speak to the community. Um, city manager, I like to say, is, is like being an orchestra conductor. Uh, it, it takes a lot of work to bring together a lot of people to make really sweet music. Uh, and I appreciate that Kim recognized the city staff who are here today. Uh, I get to stand up in front of everybody and wave my arms around a lot. Uh, but really, it's the individual musicians that are making really great music together. Um, so before we even get started, I want you to see all those folks and appreciate them for the work you do. So city staff, please stand up. Thank you. <laughs> My hope for all of you is that you get to go to work every day in a place where you get to work with smart and passionate and really talented people, because I get to do that every day, and it is really a privilege to be here at the City of Bloomington. So all successful organizations 
have visions to establish a purpose and to guide their future paths. The city of Bloomington reads, as a result of our actions, we will be a courageous and inclusive organization of engaged and empowered professionals working together to create a thriving and vibrant community for all. And it takes committed leaders to carry out this vision. This past year brought new leadership to the city with new faces and some of our own developed talent. Eric Johnson was hired as our next community development director. Eric just started this past Monday. He's not here today because I have him in a three-day training, uh, so we have to get him fully immersed right away in what we do. Chris Wilson, our former human resources director, was promoted to assistant city manager. Mary Herleman was named our deputy director of public works, and John Bradford, our new public works maintenance superintendent. Scott Anderson was promoted to utility superintendent, the police department, Mike Utecht, was promoted to commander, and Peter Curvers was named our new golf course manager. Now, all but one of these positions replaced city staff leaders who retired after many years of service. The retirees in these key leadership positions included community development director Larry Lee, police commander Jim Ryan, utility superintendent Bob Cockrell, maintenance superintendent Jim Eiler, and golf course manager Rick Siddick. Now you want to know the kind of commitment and dedication you have in your City of Bloomington employees. Overall, the 23 people who retired from the city this past year took with them a total of almost 580 years of experience and service. We have an ongoing mission to meet customer expectations and to improve customer service. We're continuing to track our progress through citizen surveys and through focus groups. And it's important for the leadership of an organization to understand the work that employees do. So this past year, I tried to put myself in their shoes and learn just how skilled and talented our employees are and how they meet the challenges of their daily tasks. Let's take a look at some of that. Good afternoon, City of Bloomington. How may I help you? I think a lot of these folks are uh, too good at seeing me port here. So how fast am I going right now? You're going too. <laughs> <laughs> is how you drop a tree lip. Very good, a little to the right, you got the idea now. Yep. You just go slow and dial it in, ride yep. the brakes if you need to, excellent. Hey, there's one. Yep. What do you think about some criminal apprehension? Well, this is probably every police officer's dream is to take down the city manager, so I'm gonna let you live out your dream right now. <laughs> Schulte does most of the videos. Uh, she's in our communications division. And I'll tell you, our communications staff, every one of them, are top notch at what they do. And they, they win us awards over and over again every year. Uh, it is an absolute uh, joy to make those videos. It's, it's a lot of fun. The artistry mural and the We Are Bloomington theme had me thinking about how city employees leave their marks on the fabric of Bloomington. It's by providing services like quality recreation programs, well-maintained parks, as well as ensuring safety and security through the police and fire protection, that it's more than just meeting the basic needs of the community. It's about delivery with purpose. And the idea, if you're going to do something, you do it well. So some of the examples of excellence in service this past year included these. Our Bloomington Police Department won the Bloomington Convention and Visitor, Visitors Bureau 2017 Spirit of Hospitality Award for their outstanding contributions to the city's hospitality industry. Officer Heidi Miller was named the 2017 Optimist Club Officer of the Year for the many roles she has served and going above and beyond in her service. Canine Handler and Detective Matt Heinzman and his partner Breaker received the Animal Hall of Fame Professional Award from the Minnesota Veterinary Medical Association for impressive achievements as a specially trained law enforcement canine team. And Detective Heather Jensen has been named the 2017 Minnesota Association of Women Police Officer of the Year, given to a female law enforcement officer who possesses excellent leadership, community service, mentoring, and day-to-day -day performance skills. And there's more. Bloomington Assistant Attorney Jennifer Cross was named to the 2017 DWI Enforcer All-Star Team for taking drunk drivers off the road and protecting lives in Bloomington. 
Jason Duke, the 2017 Firefighter of the Year for his, his, his exceptional dedication and his commitment to the fire department. Risk manager Amy Larson was featured on the cover of Public Risk Magazine as the international organization's president. And this first place award from utilities, well, you have to see this to believe it. On your mark, get set, go. There's no question Bloomington utilities workers are skilled. But did you know they're speedy too? Like, really, really speedy? Pretty synchronized. It takes a while to get everything perfect where we're both on the same page and where you don't get in each other's way. You know, even if one of us is lacking behind a little bit, we, we can usually tell and one of us will pick up the other person a little bit and help them out. That's how Justin Johnson and Chad Bauer explain the art behind the Hydrant Hysteria competition at the American Waterworks Association Conference. Utilities workers from around the state compete to build a fire hydrant from start to finish as fast as they can with no mistakes. A juggling act that took Justin and Chad one minute, 38 seconds. A time that nabbed first place. A feat this duo is familiar with. In 2016, we went to Duluth and won there. And then that got us to go to Nationals, which is in Philadelphia. And we got first there too as well. And now they're headed to Nationals again in 2018. First time we did it, it was a little nerve wracking. Now we're getting more used to it. So I think that helps. They're also getting used to the demands of their day job. We have right around 5,000 hydrants in the city that we maintain twice a year. You know, so we gotta know how to work on them and repair them when they're down. And if Chad and Justin are there, they're sure to be repaired in record time. We had them come in and demonstrate this at a city council meeting and they did it in a minute and 16 seconds in front of the city council. Now that's uh, performance under pressure. <laughs> you know, it's not just our current employees, but our past employees uh, deserve recognition too. Larry Lee, who is our former community development director, he retired after almost 40 years of service last fall, was recognized just this past Sunday by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, he is the recipient of this year's Spirit of Hospitality Award for his outstanding contribution to the travel and hospitality industry in Bloomington. And I know that Larry is here. Larry, will you stand up? There he is. Did you know that Bloomington was an all-America city? One of the key reasons that Bloomington became an all-America city in 1960 was because of our response to a major drinking water issue in the community. Now, following World War II, the demand for housing in the Twin Cities area caused a building boom in Bloomington. And although crucial water needs were met, homeowners still relied on private wells and septic tanks. And after it was found that 80% of the wells were contaminated, the city took swift action to create a municipal sanitary sewer and water supply infrastructure for the city. And for that effort, was awarded an All-America City. Now, once an All-America City, always an All-America City. And in fact, Bloomington continues to this day to receive accolades for its drinking water. Again in 2017, and this is another one of those things we can keep saying over and over, it seems, Bloomington earned top bragging rights from the Minnesota section of the American Water Works Association and was awarded best in glass for its tap water after a blind taste test. So I think for our folks in utility, you should all hold up your glasses right now and toast our utilities division for the quality of the water that they produce. You know, the city's trying to find a role to play and to create a safe and welcoming environment for all. The council recognized embracing and celebrating these changes as a priority in its strategic plan. City staff again participated in the Government Alliance on Race and Equity program, and we're working to finalize our plan and our toolkit for advancing racial equity. The vision is that the City of Bloomington will act courageously to advance racial equity. We will be a vibrant, safe, and healthy place where people of all races will thrive. In Bloomington, we acknowledge our differences, and we want all individuals to feel safe and respected. And we stand with all in our community, and nothing is going to deter us from this vision. 
We support everyone's right to safely worship the faith of their choosing. Now, last August, one of our community gathering places was targeted an act of terror that was meant to discourage the spirit of welcoming. That gathering place, Darrell Fruit Community Center, has been a valued member of this community for seven years, and it's the second Islamic place of worship in our community. This faith-based organization is thriving, as demonstrated by the level of participation in the center's activities. And ladies and gentlemen, as the mayor and this council has said, an attack on any member of our community is an attack on our entire community. So we're here to stand together today to say there is no place for hate in Bloomington. We're very fortunate today to have the leadership from Darrell Farouk Community Center. Gentlemen, would you please stand up? Thank you for being with us today. We all stand with you. You know, other programs focused on inclusion and equity include Bloomington's Learn to Lead initiative. It's a free program designed to empower individuals in the community to become involved in local government, including in the schools, uh, in the city, in nonprofit boards, and on our commissions. Diversity and inclusion in government promotes diversity, inclusivity, and equity within our city organization. We held employee panels that were well attended by our staff and provided learning opportunities and exposure with sessions on LGBTQ, immigration, and aging. And we hosted Students in Government Day to give students who might not have an exposure to how we work and what we do an inside look into how cities operate and an opportunity to build relationships with a mentor to learn about roles within the city. And Bloomington is becoming more diverse, but the pool of law enforcement candidates is not as diverse. So our Bloomington Police Department is tackling this challenge with a new program we call Pathways to Policing. Let's learn about that. From pit maneuvers to radar, this police training is standard. Follow this pen as I move it using your eyes only. But the candidates aren't. So you want to stay right here in front of his face. Abigail Smith has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a master's in social work. I was that kid that always wanted to be a cop. I just wasn't ready. After doing social work for about a year and a half, I kind of realized, you know, there's a more beneficial way, and in my opinion, a more productive way to make contact with people, to help people, and that's what helped me make the switch. Steven Nua has a bachelor's in psychology and worked as a counselor for juveniles with mental illness. I guess my interest in law enforcement kind of sparked my senior year of college when I took a criminal law class which I really enjoyed the class. I feel like I understood it a lot better than most of the classes I've taken in the past. And Rajane Michael started small and worked her way up. I started off as an explorer, which was like the very bottom, and then I was a CSO for about a year and a half. Then I was a cadet for 16 weeks, and now I'm a police officer. So for me, it was like a really big accomplishment and really proud to be where I'm at right now. And like their backgrounds, Bloomington's three newest officers were hired in a non-traditional way through a new program called Pathways to Policing. Typically, we would hire police officers from a pool of candidates that already have uh, either a, a job in law enforcement or they have their post license. The Pathway to Policing program uh, allows us to expand our pool of candidates to folks who do not already have all of the required law enforcement training. Uh, the concept is we would hire them and then we would then provide them with that training. And Police Chief Jeff Potts says removing that barrier to help with training can make a big difference for many different people especially people of color. In Bloomington here, I've, I personally have been hiring police officers for about nine years. And uh, what I've seen in that period of time is our community is becoming more diverse uh, at a pretty rapid pace, actually. Uh, and, and in terms of the pool of candidates that we have to choose from for police officers, that pool of candidates was not very diverse. As we see our community change in terms of demographics, I feel it's important for the police department to kind of go in the same direction in terms of the diversity that the community is going so that we can maintain this high level of trust that we enjoy right now on into the future. The Bloomington Police Department's Multicultural Advisory Committee was recognized by Bloomington United for Youth for its work to help strengthen relationships between the police department and the community. They've done this in particular with youth through programs such as Holiday Helpers in Blue and the Voices Heard initiative. 
Artistry received the 2017 Omar Bondarud Award from the Bloomington Human Rights Commission for its intentional effort to reach out to diverse populations, ensuring access to the arts through a wide variety of programming. Artistry creates special opportunities for students, people with disabilities, older adults, and individuals who have low incomes to make programs more accessible. The award was named after Omar Bondarud, who was the first chair of the Bloomington Human Rights Commission. And it recognizes an individual organization for their efforts to ensure human rights for all Bloomington citizens. Artistry is a great asset to this community, ensuring that the arts are alive and well here in Bloomington. And we're fortunate to have so many cultural opportunities and experiences here. A really fine example of that is one of our other partner arts associations, Angelica Cantanti Youth Choir. Angelica Cantanti is celebrating its 37th year, and they've received quite a bit of attention this year. to sing America the Beautiful at the Super Bowl with Leslie Odom Jr. It was crazy. I was just so excited and just super happy. It was just like, what is my life right now? Just like, this is crazy. Cause like, when will this opportunity ever happen again? We got the call in early January from the Super Bowl folks and um, I, I got the call. I was completely shocked. What a great opportunity for the Angelica Youth Choir organization. Um, we were just so so thrilled to represent Bloomington and the community of Bloomington and, and all of our singers and, and basically we sang for the world. We sang for the world that day and uh, you know that just that doesn't come around all the time so it was, uh, it was super 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 exciting. Angelica Cantanti Youth Choirs right now is uh, made up of about 275 singers, um, five choirs in grades 2 through 12. Um, these are singers that come to the Bloomington Center for the Arts once a week between September and May and they rehearse um, uh, with four professional conductors that we have that are all full-time educators. The Angelica Choirs have actually been around for 37 years right here in Bloomington. They started out as one choir. Our hope is that our kids learn how to become more confident and they learn the skills of, of having a, a, a nice sound and a nice nice pitch and nice voice and um, and then they'll find that they've got that forever for the whole rest of their lives. What I like about Angelica is that everyone's friendly and it's really fun. Just the fun atmosphere. I think it's just an amazing place to be. I love singing just because you get to like express yourself in a way other than like talking and it's a different form of art. It's just relaxing and it's fun to do and I just enjoy it. It just makes me feel happy. It's like a stress reliever almost, and you can just do it whenever, and it just makes you happy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the WCCO Viewer's Choice for Best Community Choir in Minnesota. And now they're internationally known following their performance at Super Bowl 52 with Leslie Odom Jr., Bloomington's own Angelica Cantanti.
I want to thank Angelica Cantani Choir along with their conductor, Elizabeth Egger. Uh, today's singers are from Oak Grove, Olson and Valley View Middle Schools, Nativity of Mary School, and one of our singers is homeschooled here in Bloomington. And I want to thank all of you again for joining us here at the State of the City on behalf of the mayor and the city council, our city staff, our leadership at the Rotary and the Chamber. It is a privilege for us to be here. It's a privilege for us to share all the great things that go on in Bloomington and really all the beautiful things that go on in America and that all of our work is to prepare for the future. And that's the folks that are standing behind us. So go out, do good things. Thank you for being here. Have a great day, everybody.